All right, guys, what is up? It is Gnomes. I'm here in a game between Shrine Master and Tiny Dragon. Shrine Master will be on the top hand side playing his tried and true STSP meta battle group. This battle group was the best battle group in the game for a very long time. I don't know if it still is. It's, it's still definitely up there. I'm not sure if it's still the best, but it's very, very strong. And then we have Tiny Dragon on the bottom right hand side playing full faction Kaether Forest. He's playing an adaptive battle group. I've been watching him for the last few games, so I know it's adaptive. I've been playing with the Elven Ancestor and the Doombringers and the Fairy, whatever it's called, Fairy or Oracle. Um, then you have spells such as uh, Call, what is it? Collective? Call to Arms? Call to Arms. And um, you have, can I actually think of the other spells he plays? Most likely, he plays a um, fanfare, right? Everybody always plays fanfare, that kind of thing. Either way, it is a, is a it is a um, probably like Grimlock's Bane, you know, the usual. Grimlock's Bane will be good against the Rift Lord. Here's the Fey Advocate. Does take quite a bit of damage. Look, already at seventeen. His base health is so low, or her base health. I don't know. Is that a guy or a girl? Does a boob? So a girl. So she, her base health is very low. We could see a swap here. Would cause, uh, would kind of keep the fake advocate safe. So, yeah, he's gonna swap here most likely. And then he can attack once. He only has eight damage. This is what's I don't personally like the KF meta, or sorry, not KF meta, the KF, um, adaptive battle group. I think the champions start their damage too low. I think FS is better. FS, their champions start at like 11. So, you play two spells and they're at like 13, right? Here, you have to play like five spells for them to be even doing damage, right? Five spells and he's at 13, finally, right? Um, I mean, if you have like War Banner plus some other thing, okay, yeah, here's the Oracle. Also, eight base, you know? It just, I don't like it. I think they're too expensive, like 77 Nora, 82. I think they're too expensive and their damage starts too low. Most, I, I assume, I mean, this is um, Tiny Dragon, so people play differently against him, but I would assume that most good players if this was a bad player playing this, would be able to, um, yeah, he's not double tapping, uh, would be able to kill the adaptive champions before they really get running. Like by the time, like even at 13, let's say they have, you play um, five spells and they're at 13 damage, right? Well, they're, they're still only at 13 damage. They've played five spells and you still have champions on the board that you can do things with, right? So they have to be at somewhere around like 17 damage for them to be scary. See, there you go. He's now, he took, took some damage there, removed the buffer at the very least, and gained the extra speed from the zeal speed. But yeah, so even if they have plus five spells, which puts them at 13, you need another five to put them at 18 for them to really be a danger. Even at five spells, you're like, eh, okay. Like, let's say, imagine you have War Banner plus like Commanded. At least that would be three right away, three damage right away. But still, I, I often feel that the K3 Forest ones, they take too long. FS is good because you can play him like a. I guess it might just be a different play style though, right? Whereas, um, I I I don't assume what's the word. I uh, I theorize that the FS um, adaptive battle group and so the UD one as well are more more so brawler battle groups. When I talk about brawler, I obviously I made these terms up myself. I don't actually know if this is the correct you know terminology for this, but uh, when I speak of um, brawler, but right, he's gonna deploy over here. That's why he's moving. There you go. He, he deployed over here for the dream state, right? Anyway, when I when I speak of brawler type battle groups, what I mean is just that um, these are battle groups that want to. He's gonna probably retreat here, right? Exactly. He's not gonna stay here. He's gonna die if he does. If he had a banner, he might put that down, but that also just die right away, so it's not the best idea. He's going to give up the font. That's fine. Anyway, um, when I speak of brawler battle groups, I just mean battle groups that you kind of want to keep fighting throughout. So you want like battle that are like very slow and continuous. So let's say trade, 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 and you will slowly eke out a win. And that's kind of what SP is made for, in my opinion. Um, because they want to keep trading because of their faction bonus, right? If you think of the Shatter Peaks faction bonus, they get part of their Nora cost when the champion dies as well, not only when you deploy. So SP is kind of made for brawler type battle groups where you just keep deploying and uh, you maybe play a spell, but you deploy as well, right? If you ever play a spell, you want to be deploying as well. Um, and I think that's how they do very well, while other battle groups might be different. But I think that most of the 
adaptive battle groups are also brawler type where you want to keep deploying um and like kind of moving forwards and more so in the case of um adaptive you don't want to be deploying and moving forwards you mostly want to be playing spells and moving forwards because you're gaining the value while you're doing that right so you want to be a playing a spell like a damaging spell that gets them low and your champion just about survives right and you can heal them back or something so you keep just like trading maybe you trade in your chant like you trade in the dreams the dreamer for example so it's a trade for a trade so dreamer for let's say a i don't know there's nothing expensive let's say the whirling quarry or something first of all you'll have advantage because there's no cost but you'll also have the extra damage gain because you played spells for the trade in the trade, right? So, um, while other battle groups may be like in SP, you want to trade. Um, is he going to move over for the heal? Yeah. He's, look at that. 34 base. He's at 40 base health. That's another thing. They're just so squishy. Is he putting a relic down or what is he doing? He could move in with the phase shift again. There is magic damage here and here, though, right? And all the summons, obviously. So I don't know. He could put a buffer on the Ancestor and then move in with the face shift. But there's just like no good way to get into this font here. He's just behind. Um, I'm going to just keep talking, though, about battle groups because that was fun. I, I was having fun. <laughs> I'm going to keep talking about brawler battle groups when I think about it. I was being amused. Anyway, um, so you want to keep trading. And um, in SP, like when I, when I think about trading as well, for example... Um, well, I would say most SP battle groups are brawler, where they just want to keep trading, and they do okay late, where you can just keep brawling, or and if you kind of just have more resources on the board uh, by late game, it's okay, as long as you've been trading throughout, so you have a bit of an advantage. Um, like, I was playing L, no. I was playing against someone who was playing um, Illusions, and I was playing sp electric which is usually a very aggressive battle group but i just kept trading and moving forward and i, I had the what's he doing here pacify was that a pacify yeah he pacifies he's gonna face shift or no all right he played a spell we just saw it that's another thing i don't like about the kf uh illusions battle group is that most of their spells are hidden right so you always know when a hidden spell was played right we just saw a hidden spell played like we all knew what was happening you can't invoke you can't invoke when you're thinking it, are you? Can you? Let's move it. What does he do? You can't. Can you? Hold up. You shouldn't be able to. He's just going to play a spell or something. Because this is a, an attack. So you can't do it when you're pacified. Use abilities to attack. Exactly. That would be very weird if this worked now. But maybe it's bugged. Maybe he knows about it. He's moving forwards. He could use an alacrity here. It looks like he's going to... You can? That's bullshit, dude. It says abilities to attack, and this is an attack. But like, other AoEs don't work. You can't use a bomb when you're pacified. All right, well, I guess now I know. Anyway, 33 health on the Ancestor. I guess he didn't use the phase shift, actually, for some reason. He could have. Oh, it's a three-turn cooldown. That's why. I thought it was two turns. I'm dumb. Well, there you go. He couldn't. Yeah, see, like I was saying, any good player, which which on Shrine Master is, I mean, he's playing a good battle group too, but any good player is just going to rush you when you don't have the time. He's at 11 damage? Not horrible. Why is he only 8? Oh, he's minus 1. There is one elf that is hidden somewhere here. Or not an elf, sorry, a fey. Ritualist for the dispel. Don't forget, all right, so he's distracted, or sorry, paralyzed on the Elven Ancestor, but don't forget, we do have a hidden spell here somewhere, right? One was played. And like I said, that's why I'll, we could also see a Force Barrier. Not that that would be very good here. Like, it'll block these two off, but the Ice Fang is right here. He can use, no, he doesn't have Distract, he has Tempo. Nice heal. Heals them all for 10, so kind of just remove the Invoke there. I mean, I assume he's... I don't even know what you can do. There's, he doesn't have any damage. Like, what is it? He has. He can kill the summons. That's all he can do. And he is evasive for some reason. Oh, because of the boon, probably, right? Yeah. No way. He's evasive too. Uh, Shroud. All right, so this one is evasive because of Shroud, and this one has evasive because of the boon. There you go. Now he should have face shift, though.
But yeah, when I say brawler, you want to keep fighting, keep moving forwards, and I think that's what this is too. All right, this is a swap with the Fey Advocate. Nice flourish. Like I said, I think this champion is insanely strong. Thing is, if he plays one, um, the one equipment, what's it called? The furry hat, and this is all gone. The distract is gone then. He's going to kill the summon. He's going to kill the summon with evasive. That's all he's doing this turn. Does he even kill it? No. He, he dies. He needs two health to die from the rift bound. All right, now he kills it. So good job. This turn, he was able to, you know, at least he got the distract and the uh, charm. But other than that, he killed one summon. Um, let's see, is he dead? One, The snow kind of messes him up too, though. Yeah, the snow terrain messes... Yeah, exactly, that's what I was saying. One furry hat, and this is, like, doesn't matter. It's all gone because of the uh, Iron Whale. Iron Whale from furry hat because of prestige. So he's dead. And a summon is coming out of it. Gets the Nor Globe as well. I've often noticed that not only like the swarm often doesn't matter to me because I can kill them in some certain way, but what annoys me more so is just that uh, they get the Nor Globe right away. When you do that, all right. There's an attack, 16 damage. All right. So I'm guessing this turn, these three summons will die. Right. Can he ever somehow deal with the Ice Fang in a way? Does he have this up? Four turns, no. Oh, he's in range of Shroud now. So yeah, maybe then the only thing that's going to die this turn is going to be the Tundra Beast. Maybe one Rift Spirit, but I doubt it. The Snow Terrain is gone, but that also helps him in a way because it allows the Rift Lord to move. All right, Soften, yeah, true, true. I mean, he's not double tapping the Ice Fang, right? Ice Fang's in Shroud range. All right. He's got minus one defense, but also evasive. That's another thing about KF adaptive. At least in the FS adaptive, you have the Bog Hopper as well as you have two. You have the the Doombringer and the Bog Hopper that have adaptive. So two non-range champions. Here it's only range, which is not bad. Usually you do like range champions that get damage like this, but still. What did I say? He kills two champions, one being a, a summon, two summons. He might kill this one. All right, he's going to attack once and move in. Yeah. Huh. He actually has Domain Arctic, so that's kind of good for the Ancestor in a way. But it's going to be gone now, right? So he, he killed two summons. Um, we do have magic damage here though with the warlock as well as the uh, well, the um, rift lord. Rift lord is dictate up. Oh, and the dispel right? It just dispels right there. All right, GG. So now, actually no, it's yeah, GG. <laughs> That's game. Yeah, it was just a bad map. If tiny dragon wants a chance there, he needs to play on a different map. That map is too aggressive to be able to uh to win with adaptive. Also, adaptive is just bad. Like, KF adaptive, you need a certain map, and you need an exact matchup, too. You, so the exact thing you would need, in my opinion, for KF to work like that, is you would need to be, first of all, first turn. I think he was second turn. Or maybe he was first. I'm not sure. But uh, you need a different map where you have more time to get to mid, and you can play mid more defensively. That map is just a, such an aggressive game, always. And second of all, you need to play against a battle group that doesn't just win outright unless you also have an insane battle group, right? So, yeah. I think, though, I think FS Adaptive is basically as good as FS Meta. So I think FS Meta is, is basically the same as FS Adaptive nowadays because of the new change. The change to the, um, the, uh, the Savant, the Firk Savant, right? Anyway, GG.